Hello friends. Today we're starting the chapter on arrays. Now arrays could be a little tricky the first time you've seen them or learned about them. So you know, don't be afraid to you know rewatch these videos or take a look through the uh, arrays chapter again. If you ever get stuck, just go back to the beginning and sort of remind yourself on what an array is uh, and then uh, see if you can make some more forward progress through these exercises. So uh, arrays are uh, very, very, very powerful uh, data structure and almost every programming language has this idea of arrays because uh, most programming languages try to deal with problems uh, that you know handle large amounts of information. Okay? And an array is a perfect mechanism for holding large amounts of information and working with large amounts of information. So if you have a collection of data or a collection of information that you want to hold, an array is usually the best tool for the job. So uh, for example, let's pretend we wanted to maybe um, keep uh, some information about our friends. Okay, we might have say five, six, or a hundred different friends. Well, instead of having five, six, or a hundred different variables or constants representing all those friends, let's say you had a variable for Jim and a variable for Susan, a variable for Anne, a variable for Beth, and so on, uh, instead of having an individual variable for each one, an array lets us collect all this information into one single entity, okay? And we could call that entity friends, for example, and it would have five friends in there, Jim, Susan, Ann, Frank, Beth, uh, and so on, okay? Uh, but it didn't, doesn't have to be just words like names that we hold in our arrays. We might also want to represent information like our height each year. Okay, as we grow, uh, as we grow uh, bigger each year, it might be nice to look back at the uh, heights we were at each year. So, say if we wanted to represent our heights in centimeters, we could have an array called heights, and it could contain oh four years worth of heights: uh, 113 centimeters, 115 centimeters, 118, and 119 centimeters, something like that. Okay. So each array holds some number of what we call elements, all right? And all elements uh, are usually values of some type and they're held in the collection. Now, I usually don't do this, um, but I'm gonna go through here, since arrays are so important, I'm gonna actually walk through this uh, introduction section that Apple provides in the Learn to Code 2 uh, and learn to code two chapter arrays uh, just so that we get a good picture of what these arrays really do. So again, arrays are lists or collections and the lists or collections are ordered so that we know how to get to a each value or each element inside the list or the collection. There's an order to those, uh, to the information and we'll take a look at that in a second here. So uh, here the example they give is imagining that we're making an ice cream sundae and we have four ingredients that are going into our sundae. Well, you might say, well, that's not a big deal. Let's just make four variables and we'll name the variables first ingredient, second ingredient, third ingredient, and fourth ingredient, okay? And we can assign them to ice cream for first ingredient, banana is assigned to second ingredient, chocolate to third ingredient and cherries to the fourth ingredient. And that's fine and that works okay. It's a lot of typing, but imagine if we had a, uh, you know, we had to keep track of a thousand different ingredients for some very complex recipe. Uh, well, you're not gonna want to have, you know, 987th ingredient and then another constant called 988th ingredient and so on. That would just be uh, too crazy to have that many constants or variables defined. So that's where these arrays come in. And with just one line, we can represent all the ingredients as a collection or an array of ingredients. 
So here uh, we show how in Swift you define an array called ingredients. You use the var keyword. Var means it's a variable. It can be changed. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, ingredients is the name of the array and we assign it, that's what the equal sign means, we assign it to these four elements. These four elements are going to be the initial values inside the array and they're going to be ice cream, banana, chocolate, and uh, cherries. Okay, so those are the uh, four elements in the array ingredients. Okay. Now notice that the way we tell what's in this array is we put a left square bracket over here and a right square bracket over here and then each element is separated by a comma. Okay. All right. Now uh, we also said that this array is ordered. Now what do we mean by ordered? Well what we mean by that is that, there's, uh, that there is an index uh, for each element in the array. So uh, we can get to, or we can access, or we can change, or we can look at each element in the array by their index. So here, the index at element, sorry, the index, the element at index zero is ice cream, or the item at index zero is ice cream. The item at index two is chocolate. The item at index three is now a jar of what looks like sprinkles or something. And the item at element one, sorry, the element at item one, at index one, is a strawberry. Okay, so uh, we can uh, assign these values at each index to a different value if we want to. So at the beginning of this, I'm going to go back and look at this. At the beginning, we had a banana at index one and cherry at index three, and then they get replaced here by these statements, we're going to say ingredients at element one, you are now going to be replaced with a strawberry. So the banana got changed to a strawberry. And the element at index three, which was a cherry, got changed to a jar of sprinkles. Okay? And we denote this by saying in Swift ingredients, square bracket one, that means the index, the element at index one is now going to be assigned to a strawberry. And this statement right here says the ingredients arrays element at index three is now going to be assigned to the jar of sprinkles instead of the cherry. Okay? All right, let's go on here. Now, why do we use zero for the first ingredient when we count through here? Zero, one, two, three. There are four elements in this particular array, uh, but we start counting at index zero, one, two, and three. And that's just the way sort of uh, computer scientists have done it uh, almost from the beginning. Most programming languages, uh, they have this idea of arrays and their collections of information and we all start counting their index at index zero. Okay, so let me ask you, what is the element in here at index two? So you just look over, you find the index two and you look above it and you say, well, that's chocolate. Okay, if I say, what's the element at index one? Well, that's a banana. Okay, you might be tempted to say it's ice cream because that's the first element, but really that's the element at index zero. Okay, so the element at index zero is ice cream, the element at index one is a banana, the element at index three is a cherry. Okay, so you don't have to look at every element in an array when you're working with it. You can find a value, you know, the 17th element of the array or the 941st element of array by using the index 941. That will give you the element at that particular index. Very nice that way that you can just, you know, no matter how big your array is, you don't have to look through all the elements to get to the 941st one. You can just say, give me the element or the item at index 941 and you have it very fast okay it's one of the very powerful things about arrays but you have to remember to start counting at zero zero is the first element all right 
uh, there are some nice functions or methods that we can uh, call on arrays that do some actions. For example, one thing you might want to do in a collection is remove an item. Okay, so if we look at this, what's happening here is the array had uh, four elements in it, index 0, 1, 2, and 3, to start with, but we called the command index.remove at, at index 2, and we removed the element at index 2. So let's watch this again here. We'll remove the element at index 2. I'm going to go to the next page here. Here it has four elements in it. We remove the chocolate at index two, and what happens is now we have a collection of only three elements in it. Index zero, one, two, and the chocolate has been removed. Okay? Uh, let's also uh, look at this one here. We have a function called append. Now the word append means put on to the end of something, hook it on to the end. So here we're saying we want to append an item or an element and it will always get put at the end of the array. So to start with, we had only three elements in our array, ice cream, banana, and cherry. Uh, but when we did the append jar of sprinkles, we now have four elements. And we've added a new index, index three, to the uh, array. And in, at index three, the element is now sprinkles. Okay. And finally, there's one other really nice one. If you don't want to add an element to the end, but you want to add an item or an element to somewhere in the, anywhere in the array, you can say insert the item, in this case, in, in ingredients, the array, we want to insert the strawberry item at index one. Okay, so when our array used to have four items in it, now we've put a new item, strawberry, at a first element, so we move the other ones, the, the banana, the cherry, and the jar of sprinkles, we move them to indexes 2, 3, and 4 to make room for a new element at index 1, which is strawberry. And now finally, our ingredients array has changed from being four elements to being five elements now. All right? Okay. Uh, now, the really powerful part about arrays is if we want to do something to every element of the array, the combination of for loops and arrays is just everywhere in computer programming. Uh, it's very powerful. It lets us do some combination or some work on every single element in an array in a very efficient fashion. So here's a for loop, for example, in, uh, that works on every element in the ingredients array. And it goes like this. It says for item in ingredients. Now remember, ingredients is the name of our uh, array. And ingredients has five elements in it. Okay? If we say for item in ingredients, that's going to loop through every single item in this array or every element in this array. In fact, the word item here is actually going to be a variable that each time through the loop is going to get a new value. That new value will be the element at the very first index, at the, the very first element of the array, the ice cream. The next time through the loop, the item will be the banana. The next time through the loop, the item will be the chocolate bar. The next time through the loop, the item will be the jar of, of, uh, of sprinkles. And the final time through the loop, the item will be the cherries. Okay, so each time in this for loop, the, the command that's in the for loop is place item in the bowl. And since item is ice cream, then banana, then chocolate, then sprinkles, then cherry, each one of those will get placed in order into the bowl because item will be ice cream, then item will be banana, and it's going to say place the banana in a bowl. Then the next time through the loop, item will be chocolate bar, and it's going to say place chocolate bar in bowl. The third time through, the, sorry, the fourth time through the loop, the item will be the jar of sprinkles, and it's going to say place the jar of sprinkles in the bowl. And the last time through the loop, item will be cherry, and this command will be place cherry in the bowl. So let's watch this animate here. 
First time through the loop, it's ice cream, then banana, then chocolate bar, then sprinkles, then cherry get put into the bowl in order. Okay, And that's what we mean by an array is an ordered list or an ordered collection. In this case, the order is ice cream, banana, chocolate, sprinkles, and cherry. And when we use a for loop, we go through all the ingredients, all the elements of the array ingredients, and we place each one in a bowl by using this simple for loop here. Remember the key is, is that item, inside this for loop, item gets assigned to every element in the array in order. Now, if, this, if we had an array of names, for example, and the names were Jim, Susan, Anne, Frank, and Beth, then if we said for name in list of names, and we wanted to print out each name, well, name in the for loop, for name in list of names, name would get replaced by Jim the first time through the loop, then Susan, then Anne, then finally Frank, and then Beth, okay? So we'll play around with lots of different uh, sets of arrays over the next oh, five, six lessons here, uh, and you'll see how these arrays are very powerful and they become extremely extraordinarily powerful when you couple them with a for loop, okay? All right, so uh, for next time, uh, we'll start off, we'll start coding on the very first uh, lesson in this chapter. Uh, remember, if you ever, you know, get confused about arrays, you, you won't be the first person. Uh, the, the first time you see them, they're, uh, they can be a, a little bit confusing. So come back and watch this video again or, um, or work through the first couple, uh, first couple uh, examples in this in this chapter and I think you'll be back on your feet okay all right uh, we'll see you next time and we'll start coding uh, example one